Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Monday Moodcast. It's episode 32, folks. I'm Michael Bear, and I'm here as always with Greg Ober and Andrew Nisoff. And we're here to rock your minds with video game knowledge. Or maybe <laughs> we'll just that was really video game knowledge. It fizzled out. That's it's right. Real well, I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> no. trying to. Yeah. All right. Yep, Sorry. Okay. So, what do we play this week, Andrea? Modern Warfare Two. Two. Yeah, and three. Modern Warfare Two. I um, you know, now I. Now you're I, just regressing. I, I am. I really am. Ugh. Last week, last week I played a lot of Skyrim. Um, I wanted to play that this week, but I never did. Um, so I just had a like a all Call of Duty gaming session the other day. And, uh-huh. Yeah, played some Modern Warfare Two. Played some Modern Warfare Three. Is Modern Warfare Two still your favorite, or is Modern Warfare Three your favorite? You know, I I really like them both. I think I they're they're so close. Greg is rolling his eyes. I do, but um, it's like the child. Like someone asked, like which is your favorite child? Right. Yeah, oh, I like go. them both equally. Right. No, yeah, it's, it's true. I do. I really do. Um, you know, like I've said, Modern Warfare Three. I really like the support kill streak setup. Sure. I like that you get points for capturing a flag in domination, like right. the, toward your, your kill streak or support streak or whatever it is. Right. Um, it's always tricky to go back to this one because I really like to play the objective. I don't like to camp in the corner and just get kills like everyone else does. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still determined to get, to, to get a nuke. I, I really, really, really want a nuke. Um, I, I don't know. You and Iran. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's I, a political joke. Yeah, it is. Know. There you go. I don't know go. if it's already happened, but, um, in this particular game, I did okay. This is actually the, the first game of Modern Warfare 2 that I played in a long, long, long time. Didn't it go that bad. I know. It was, it was quite nice. It makes me think of that Brysai song, that Modern Warfare 2, do you guys know it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I no. got, I got to post the link to it. I love it. It's like, I will miss you, Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. <laughs> right before Modern Warfare 3, uh, came out. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's So it's doing. all Call of Duty for you all time this week? Yeah, pretty much. Nice. In, in short, yep. Man. Greg? <laughs> well, I was busy playing better games. Ah, um, there it goes. Mm-mm. So I played a bit of Borderlands 2 DLC. Good? Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> All right, because that game is amazing. All right, no, I know. No, you don't know because you didn't get the sanctuary. Uh oh. No, no, I didn't. Podcast fight. I don't know. Anyways, it um, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. I I liked the first two better. The second one, the campaign of Carnage, was my favorite. Okay. Um, campaign of Carnage. I haven't finished it yet, mainly because like I haven't had anyone to play with. Is that a hint? So, huh? Is that a hint? I mean. You didn't download it. Yeah, I did, actually. So, That's Brian Stone and I play a little bit of it. Um, but it's it's okay. Like, it, There's not that trademark humor that right. I kind of expect. Like, the characters aren't as over the top. Okay. And I'm kind of sad about that. Like, the, the enemy's like this whiny, like, why don't you hate me? You should want to come kill me right now. That's annoying. Yeah. So, but other than that, I did some Halo 4. Okay. I'm halfway through my operator specialization. Look at you. That's my third one. God. And... I gotta play more Halo 4. Yeah, you do, because it's awesome. It is. Way better than these games. It's what you're seeing <gasps> oh, on the screen right now. no! Ouch. Um, and I bought Guardians of Middle Earth. Yes! So, I figured I'd give it a shot, and I enjoyed it. Good. And I've been enjoying it. Good. So, we've had some play sessions. I think we're going to do a Brolo on it. Oh, yeah. Because, you know... Oh, it wouldn't be a Brolo, because it's not really Halo. Well, it's still Brolo, because that's our series. Yeah. I guess. I, I, I like it. Brolo is where the bros go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Greg is choking on my lameness. Like, he can't uh, deal with it. Awesome. Uh, any, um, what? What? Oh, so Guardians of Middle Earth. Yeah. It's fun. Netcode. Not so fun. Not so fun. No. But still fun. Yes. And that has been my week. Good. Uh, ooh, same as you, pretty much. Some Guardians. Uh, I downloaded Borderlands 2, but the fact that the download took me forever made me annoyed, so I didn't actually boot it up. I just downloaded that DLC, but I haven't played it yet. Um, I want to get... Okay, well, okay. Borderlands 2 is one of those games I want to get back into. I want to. I don't know why I'm not motivated to. Like, I like it. Every time I'm actually in it, I have fun, but for some reason I can't make myself hit that start button. I don't want to do it. Like, I do, but I don't. Maybe it's just because there's so much to do. 
Like, I fell behind everyone I know that still plays the game. So now I'm a million levels behind them, and then it's lame, because I don't want to, like, go fight things that are going to kill me in one second. So that means I can't really play with my friends, but I don't want to play with by myself. Well, if you play with us, we can get you to level 50 real quick. I know, but that's a lame journey. Like, me sitting there and you guys killing everything. Well... Who was the one who didn't play with us? No, I know, no, I know. Oh, no, I I stuff to do. I'm no. not gonna. Yeah, no, I'm not I, gonna play the game. No, with you. yeah, no, oh, I love I, 50 I, now. Yeah, oh, I, no, uh, I know. I can't play with you. Yeah, I know, guys. I know. But like, what am I supposed to? No, no. <laughs> I, don't know. I understand. I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just saying, like, now it's now it's like lame sauce for me. I got to find like new friends. No, I mean, I I understand, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, Mike, because uh, you know what little I played with it. You know, yeah. it was kind of. It was frustrating to be so far behind. Yeah. Um, level wise. So. Right. You don't have any room to talk because you didn't even uh, get to like uh, the main uh, part of the game. So. I I put in. No, no. I put in a didn't. couple you hours. Didn't. You didn't. And I just I couldn't nope. get into it. False. True. Anyways, yeah. I think the reason I'm not getting into this one as much, aside from the writing not being as good. Yeah. Um, you know I've been 50 for a long time now. Yeah, like and they, they haven't raised. And they haven't them, raised yeah. the level cap yet, and it's really frustrating because I do all these story missions, I get all this experience. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. So it's kind of like I'm playing the game to just play the game. Right. But at some point, I'm like, all right, you I did give something. you money. I sure would like to be able to earn a level. Right. They keep saying that they're going to do that. They keep saying that they're going to raise it, and then they don't. Yeah, which is annoying. Sometime yeah. this spring, that's what they said. Right. So who knows? Well. We'll see what happens. So, um, so, anyways, that's what I have not been playing is Borderlands 2 for that reason. But I have been playing uh, Guardians of Middle Earth, and I jumped back into Skyrim. Yay! Um, which I haven't in like a month and a half. Um, it was kind of a fluke. Um, I, last week, my old standby Xbox 360 died on me, and so I had to bury it and um, and go get a new one. Of course, now they're selling the new hotness, like black, sleek ones uh, system. So I got one of those. Because the holiday special was still on, so I could get lots of money off for it. And it comes now with a full game download of Skyrim, which is awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I know yeah. that. So uh, I was like, well, might as well. And I don't have to use a disc anymore. So I sold my physical copy of Skyrim, and I downloaded that one. And since I didn't even have to use a disc anymore, I decided, hey, you know, I'm feeling a little bored. I'm going to switch games for a second and play some Skyrim. So I loaded it up, and lo and behold, I had a great time with it. Again, I real remembered how much I love this game, so... I think I'm going to get back into it. Um, however, however, and this leads nicely into our next discussion, um, I uh, do realize, recognize that there are a number of things in Skyrim that are not perfect. Um, it is probably the best fantasy RPG, uh, I would say. I don't know if you guys agree with me, of this generation. Um, I really like it. But there are some things about it that are not perfect. And a lot of people don't like the combat, particularly the close-range combat. They still think it feels kind of clunky. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Um, what I don't like is when the characters in one part of the world like have no idea that you're pretty much a massive stud all over the world. Um, that's a little bit silly when you like complete full quest lines and you kill millions of people in front of other people and then no one else like knows who you are when you come back to town. Um, that's annoying um, to me, um, but I can deal with that because I love everything else about the game. And so I kind of create my own story around the game when I'm playing it, and then I can deal with that. And I was wondering if there are any other games like that for you guys where there are maybe one or two like glaring errors that make it really annoying, but you can get over that because the core gameplay or the core story or whatever you're so into that you can just you just deal with it and have fun either way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting that you bring that up about Skyrim because I never really thought about that as far as the combat goes. I guess it's because I, I primarily use the, um, the bow and arrow. Right. Or, no, that's pretty much it. <laughs> the bow right. and arrow. Um, but, uh, I guess, well, Call of Duty is fresh on my mind, <laughs> as usual. Um, like... <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 and 3, I know Greg's probably going to roll his eyes again. <laughs> but, the, yeah, I, I agree with you that the, the spawn system is broken. It's, right. It's certainly frustrating and definitely not the best. Right. However, there, yeah, there's just something about these games that just, I keep coming back. And right. that really doesn't bother me. It's Well, no, I, I take that back. It does bother me. 
to a certain extent, if it just keeps happening, that's usually when I, when I rage quit. I just right. have to, I just have to walk away. But you know, the next day, I'm like, okay, you know, it's a new day. Let's <laughs> let's, uh, let's try this again. And whenever I play Call of Duty, it really is a coin toss. I either do awful, which is usually the spawn trap, death things, right. and just bad things happen. Um, or, um, I, I do, I do okay, and it's, it's fun, and when I do really, really awesome, man, I wish I could play like this every day, which it makes me want to play more, right. and then, um, I always, I always tell myself, oh, do more game, do more game. Sure. And then, it, like, everything falls apart, so I never know when to quit when I'm ahead. Right. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think if you like a game enough, in general, um, those little annoying things, you can you can look past those. Right. How about you, Greg? Um, this conversation makes me think a lot about survival horror games. Okay. And I think a lot about how funky the controls are in a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's to make it more frantic. Maybe. Um, just because like you aren't as capable as say a super soldier. Right. Interesting. But, um, yeah, like, I think back to, like, the original Resident Evils and, and, like, the fixed camera position. Sure, yeah. And how it could be annoying, like, oh, I hear something off screen, so I just have to, like, sit here and wait for it to come into the frame so I can <laughs> shoot it. Right. Um, or even as recently as Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space, like, some of the movements, while better, aren't necessarily where I'd like them to be. They're not as smooth as I'd like them to be. Sure. And I mean, like I said, I've heard the argument of, well, that makes it scarier. And I don't know if you can, like, say better controls makes a game less yeah. scary. No, I think you could just do a better uh, job making it scarier. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if that argument holds any weight, but they're definitely those games I love, horror games, and I just, I miss good the triple a horror games i wish they would be around more right. often yeah that was a terrible sentence i'm sorry that's okay um, <laughs> that sounds like a hallmark card like i wish, I wish you would, would be, be around, around more often, more often. Yeah. <laughs> i love you <laughs> <laughs> horror games <laughs> yeah so those are definitely things i'm willing to look past um, yeah and i guess more recently guardians of middle earth Oh, like the net code. The net code, people. It's really bad. Come like, on, Monolith. We were playing last night, and Mike got disconnected for no reason. <laughs> for no reason at all. Um, like, I remember I started a match, and I couldn't move, like, three feet until one person specifically disconnected. Because right. the game was, like, waiting really? on right. this oh, person. Man. And it was like, we yeah. couldn't do anything, so he was just kind of forced to quit. Right. Which was, that sucks for him, you know? Yeah, it does. Or her, I guess. Yeah. But... Yeah, so, no. Yeah. There are some things in mind to look past, but I don't know. Like, I, I think a big test, one that I've really wanted to take for a while now, is Deadly Premonition. Okay, yeah. Because I've heard that game is horrible. Awful. Yeah, it's like, horrible. The controls yeah. are absolutely terrible. Right. But the story is supposedly really interesting, and the characters are right. kind of cool. Right. Well, that'd so, be the ultimate test. And yeah. they just announced. I think they announced that they were going to do like a sequel. I think, yeah, there's yeah. another one coming. Yeah. So I'd like to give it a shot at some point, but maybe when it's like $5. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> absolutely. Or something. Yeah. So. so the flip side of that of that um, conversation then is what one or two things about a game can you not overlook? Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, you know, all these other things are in place. Like if, if this one thing it does not work, you just can't get into it. Ooh, I'd question. Have to, I'd have to say controls. Controls? Yeah, absolutely. Like, if I cannot interact with the world, yeah, um, that's a problem. Yeah. And I would also say, like, loading. So, like, if the world isn't going to load right, if it's not going to be what it's supposed to be, right. like, I, I can't play your game. Even right. if your controls are solid, right. if, like... Like, say, since Modern Warfare 3 is on the screen, like, half the level didn't load... Or like, right. like, I watch the the Rooster Teeth Minecraft like yeah. plays every week, you know, yeah. and every week they have problems yeah. with, like, getting across the world because the world doesn't load right, right. away. Right, right. And I'm just thinking to myself, it's Minecraft. Like, right. It's not that strenuous in the process. Like, <laughs> it shouldn't yeah. be. I didn't yeah. think it was. No. So, 
that that would irritate me if we had like a full party of Minecraft, which I certainly wouldn't mind. That would be fun. Cough, cough. Yeah, we should do that. Um, and like we couldn't get anywhere. People were just dropping in and out of the game, right? Because like the world's not ready and right. So, I would think that my answer to the question would depend slightly on the um, genre of the game I'm playing. Hmm. Like for first-person shooters. If the net code doesn't work for a first-person shooter, I'm, like, out. Like, if it has nothing to do with me, and it's obvious that I've got a good connection, but I just cannot, like, I can't move or can't... Pl- like, I play first-person games 99% of the time for the multiplayer. Like, I don't buy Call of Duty because I want to see the campaign. Like, campaign's stupid to me. Like, it's just blow up, follow this dude, it, blow up. It really up. is, yeah. Um, but I love the multiplayer. So, if the net code is not up to snuff, and I just can't play and it keeps disconnecting me, then I am out of a first-person shooter. As far as, um, like, an RPG, it would be, um, it would be the controls, I think. Like, I have to, I, it has to be intuitive enough so that I can get into that character, and if it's not, I don't want to be a part of it. Um, and I would think, I play some, some sports games sometimes, too, not that much, but I do play sometimes, and, and I think the same thing would be for that, too. If the controls are, like, like, I remember when they changed... I really like basketball games, and I remember when they changed everything from being a button um, to shoot the basketball to, like, everyone got on this whole, like, freestyle stick thing, and now suddenly you had to use the other analog stick to, like, shoot the ball, and it made no sense to me. Like, it was stupid. Really? Yeah, it was really dumb. You had to, like, flick the Weird. stick, like... And I couldn't control anything, and then I, my character always looked like a moron. Like, I would drive <laughs> to the lane and, like, pull up way too early because I hit the stick accidentally... And then I'd be just swearing at my screen. It was evil. So, so yeah, controls um, definitely in like a, in a single player game and and netcode in a in a multiplayer game. Um, unless it's something like Guardians of the Earth, where it's the only strategy game on the console. <laughs> so I'm going to deal with it because it's going to be right. It's not like you have any other options. Right, and it's it's Middle Earth. I get to like play with Gandalf. Sauron's a boss. <laughs> Sauron is a boss. All right. So yeah, good discussion. Anyway. Do you have an answer to that question? Oh no, Andrew, Andrew doesn't care. <laughs> As long as it says COD in the title, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just said that. God. Feel dirty. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I'm thinking it's it's probably, if if I can't play the game control-wise, then I You're don't out. really, yeah, I have a hard time getting used to it. Um, if, for example, uh, I recently got the GTA by City 10 year anniversary edition for my phone. Congratulations. I know, and I love it in the fact that it's it's the same game that I remember. Like, it's, it's the same. It looks awesome. Right. Um, but the control on a phone, I am I am really struggling. And I, I haven't actually started really any of the missions yet. I'm just driving around, walking around, trying to get used to the controls. And as much as I love, um, you know, the, the PS2 version, right. I just... This version on my phone, I'm really struggling with, which is why I haven't really played it. I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to slowly get used to the controls, of, you know, when I think of it. But, uh, yeah, that's really that's really what's holding me back. Man, I wish they'd re-release it for the Xbox. Yeah, I'd buy that in a second. <laughs> would, you, would you say that you boarded the struggle bus? Boarded the struggle bus? <laughs> Um, in GTA Vice City, oh yes, absolutely. All right. Yeah, I'm still on it. Also, follow I'm, I'm waiting for my stop so I can get off. Yeah. Also, <laughs> follow up question. Uh huh. Is your favorite kind of fish cod? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. The uh, look on her face says it absolutely. all. Absolutely. Yes, I love Call of Duty. Also. <laughs> it's not. No. No, I. Yeah, go uh-huh. ahead. Uh huh. Also, do uh-huh. you? <laughs> go ahead. Go do you my... bathe with soap? <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, punny humor here uh-huh. on the Mooncast. Mm-hmm. So, um, something a little bit more morose uh, in topic here. Again, years, totally. <laughs> again, they're trying to ban our mature-rated games. What's going on, Greg? Say it ain't so. Uh, so this guy in <laughs> this Utah. Guy. Oh no, Representative Jim Matheson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to get Video Games Ratings Enforcement Act into a law. Okay. Um, and it's the same thing that we've seen before. It's like, you know, it, it prohibits the sales and rentals of adult-rated video games to minors. Sure. 
Um, and, it, it, you know, if you do that, then it's a felony or something. I don't know. So they're going to take, like, nerdy McNerd GameStop manager, like, 17-year-old out of the store and away in handcuffs or something? Right. You're like, oh, I didn't know that right. he was... Oh, God. Exactly. Um, right, because we don't have better things to do with our tax dollars. Well, sure. and the thing that irks me the most is, like, you want to talk about wasted taxpayers' dollars? Yeah, like, let's talk about the that. The poor people of Utah, like... This they already live in Utah. Well, right. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about Utah. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Utah. <laughs> I really like your potatoes. Isn't that Idaho? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like wow. anything about Utah. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Well, anyways. Like, this already got shot down by the Supreme potatoes. Court. Like, you're ridiculous, Mike. No, I know. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. I... <laughs> This already got shot down by the Supreme Court. How many years ago? Yeah, no, I know. Like, California brought it to the Supreme Court, and it got shot down. Right. Why are you wasting people's time and money? Because it's political. Because people get shot, and horrible things happen. So politicians say, oh, well, that's a good chance for me to look like I care. But the thing is, like, maybe that might be the case with him. Same with Rockefeller. Who, right. By the way, I read like a week or two ago. He's not even up for re-election. Like he's right. just quitting. He's done after this term. So <laughs> he's I'm like, out. Why are you doing? Yeah. Right. Right. So he wasn't doing it for votes. Just, just he's doing it because he thinks it's important. Yeah. Really. Video games. Awful. But Good for him. like to go along with this, I saw that um, after Biden and his task force, you know, did all that <laughs> yeah. we talked about last task week. Force. Task force. Yes. Yeah. Biden. One, four, one. You need to stop. <laughs> you have a problem. Yeah, she does. And the uh, first step is admitting it. Yeah. Oh, I totally do. Yep. Mm -hmm. She admitted it. Yeah, so... Anyways. Anyways. Anyway, yeah. So, um, I guess Obama called for Congress to fund a study on the effects of violent video games. Right, because we don't have enough of those. Yeah. You know how much this will cost? What oh he's boy. asking for? What's he asking ridiculous. for? Something ridiculous. Ten million dollars. Oh. Nice. For the federal federal CDC to study the root cause of gun violence, including any relationship to video games and media images. Give me a break. Ten million dollars. Good lord. Yeah, it's it's really stupid. Like, Look, if you don't want people to shoot people with guns, make the guns less easy to get in the hands of yeah. people that should not have them. Well, it's not even that. I know we're kind of going off on a tangent here, because I, I saw this video that was very interesting about from a psychologist. Uh -huh. and he's talking about, like, you want to make these these crimes stop, stop plastering these people's faces all over right. the media. Like, right. If someone who's mentally unstable sees, you know, this latest killer, well, right. I'd say the, the one who's still alive, at least. Right. Um, the crazy one from Colorado. The theater killer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I forget his name. Crazy and I honestly crazy don't. Pants. I honestly don't care because yeah. he's a d bag. Right. Um, you know, if I were mentally unstable and I saw the twenty-four hour news coverage, right, I'd be like, "Oh, that's my awesome!" Face is everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get to be I famous. I want to be famous. Right. I mean, that's certainly a messed up way to think about things, but you know, it's a valid point. It's like. So maybe stop plastering people's faces and talking about it 24-7 like it's right. this thing that we should be, right? I don't know, like, just always on our mind. Right. I don't know, that's... Right. That was that guy's opinion, I tend to agree with it. Right. But we're not a political podcast, are we? No, we're not, so we'll get off of here. But, but it does do relate to our this, video games, and that's ridiculous. Stop. I do feel that this funding and, like, this study is a waste of time. Because yes. there's already been a lot done on them. Right. And what they're going to, i tell you right now, what it's going to show is scientifically it's going to be inconclusive. They're going to find that some kids that are already messed up or have messed up childhoods or families are going to be more prone to get violent when they play violent video games, but that's because they have a messed up family and they don't know how to deal with their emotional problems, so they're going to take it out in the way only way that they see as effective, which is violent video games. Which they, but by the way, they shouldn't be playing anyways because they're probably too young to play them, and we already have a rating system in place to keep them from playing them. So if parents right. would just parent, and if the law would just be the law, and like everyone lock up your guns if you've got guns, <laughs> like anyone who's not supposed to have guns, don't let them have guns, and any little kid that's not supposed to play my violent video games, don't play them, then everything will be okay. 
But the problem is, and like this is like their big thing, like the ESRB is just voluntary. Yeah. Like, you well, don't need to yeah. follow it. I know, but everyone does. But everyone does, right. right? Like I cannot walk into Best Buy even to this day. Right, you'll I'm get twenty-four, yeah. and right. I walk in sometimes. They're like, "Oh, or, I need to see your ID." Oh, yeah, I get that too. And it's mm-hmm. like I even get it, and I look like Gandalf compared to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, my staff will play this game." And they're like, uh, "Can we see some ID, sir?" And they're like half my age. The person who's checking me out. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But so, it's yeah. nice to know they do it, you know? Yeah. It's nice to know they do it. Like, they've really cracked down on it in the past, I'd say, like, six to eight years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I remember being 16 and trying to get, like, the, the Grand Theft Auto double pack right. for the original Xbox, and they're like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I was like, like, my mom is outside in the car. She right. drove me here. Right. Like, she said it's okay. No, she needs to come in and physically say this is okay yeah. for oh, you to man. buy. Right. And it's like as annoying that as that is, I, I get it. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. You know. No, they. They. I have nothing against ratings. I have nothing against warning parents. I definitely have nothing against every single parent being, you know, exposed to what is really in the game. Real, just like I would feel the same way about movies and things like that. You know, like, but don't try to take it off the market for the rest of us who in, who have, you know, like, who enjoy this as our entertainment, as our, you know, stress reliever. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's the same way, like, that I would feel horrible if they started, like, banning music again or, like, banning certain movies or books because they think it's dangerous. Like, mm-hmm. that is that is a slippery slope that I don't want to be on. And that's why I live in America and not Uzbekistan or, like, anywhere where they chop my hand off or doing something that I don't, that they don't like. You know what I mean? Rant over. I hope we don't have anyone from Uzbekistan listening to this right now. We just pissed off Uzbekistan <laughs> and Utah, and Utah. In yeah. one We're podcast. In Everything starting with you. We're going to piss off. So now I've got to get to Uganda and Ukraine. I'm going to piss them off in the next like 30 minutes before we're done. All right. I'm going to try. Okay. Okay. Here okay. we go. Here we go. So, um, Greg, you know those dirty Ukrainians are playing? <laughs> Oh my God, my God. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. That's, Seriously, they're yeah. <laughs> Dead Space Three demo. That's yes. where all the cool kids are playing That's these days. The cool Especially the ones who punked out in corporate shield on Facebook to get it early. Yeah. Just like you. Yep. How do you feel about that? I'm fine with it. Actually. Okay. So uh, <laughs> give us a little mini mini review about Dead Space Three, and should we be excited for its release? All right. So I, as Mike said, sold out, and I found something in my Facebook feed that was like, "Hey, if you like Facebook, or if you like Facebook, <laughs> if you like Facebook, if like, you like Facebook, Facebook, dog." <laughs> I think you can do that. Can't you like? You probably Facebook yeah. You can on like Facebook? Facebook on Facebook. That's so meta. It's awesome. Um, if you like Dead Space on Facebook and Twitter then we'll send you a code to download the Dead Space 3 demo early. Because it comes out Ooh. tomorrow, I think. Oh, tomorrow or Tuesday. Like. Oh. But I saw it and I'm like, what the heck? We already, as the MooCast, like Dead Space on Twitter. So yeah. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll do this. Right. And they got my code, punched okay. it in, downloaded it. It was like, how big was the file? It was like two gigs It's got to be something. big, yeah. It's really wow. big. For a demo. Um, yeah, for a demo. And? And it is, eh, it's a mixed bag, Uh-oh. I'll say. So, being that nobody else has it yet, I haven't been able to do co-op. Okay. Um, but I did mess around with, they have a whole room that you can, that you have like infinite health, and it just spawns enemies whenever you want. So oh, so you, you can, can just kill them? You can build, you can mess around with the guns. Cause oh, you, okay. you can like build your own guns. I didn't know that. Oh. Well, you can build your own gun. That's cool. Um, you can find various parts and like... So if you don't like the plasma cut or something about it, you can change it. Like, Ooh. change the tip of it so it fires differently. That's like, cool. You can change, like, if you want to make it more of, like, a flamethrower, you can put flames in it. Nice. Yeah. Like, kind of cool. At first, I thought it was kind of gimmicky. Yeah. You know, like, oh, hey, you can change your guns around. Ooh, now, man. can you make them pink and glittery? I'm sure you can. I don't know about color schemes. Oh. Well, uh, she's maybe. not going to buy that game. Yeah. <laughs> Screw that, then. <laughs> But I did play the little bit of the single player yeah. that they gave me, and I'll say this. The graphics are fantastic. Like, are they? Some of the monsters look pretty grotesque, and I was like, oh. That's grotesque. That. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, that's grotesque. grotesque. <laughs> and some of the things like surprised me. There was one enemy who normally he like, looks like all the other ones. Right. So I was like shooting off the limbs, and all of a sudden... <laughs> His torso exploded, oh, and that's... he became like 
walking legs with three new tentacles oh, that you god. had to shoot off. Like, uh, oh my god, that's a surprise because that's never happened before. <laughs> there you go. If I had a nickel for every time I was walking down the street, someone's abdomen someone's exploded. Spine was just uh, three new tentacles. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Not again. Come on, Grandma. <laughs> So, there's that. Um, it's gross. It, it added a roll feature, which I liked. So, if you double tap the run button. Oh, you roll out of the way? Roll out of the way, which I liked. I thought that was cool. Yes, it is. Cool. Giving me, you know, a little more freedom. Yeah. But there were a couple things. Like, one, there was cover based shooting. Really? Like, if you go up to chest high box mm-hmm. and you, like, press the aim down sights button, like, he'll crouch behind it. Oh. And. It doesn't seem like Dead Space is the cover-based shooter. Though. Right. And there were moments... So it's it just in my mind, I was like, why is this a thing? I don't understand. Right. And then there were moments where I was fighting uh, humans. Like regular humans? Like regular humans. And I... like very quickly, it seems like they just get overrun by necromorphs. Sure. But there was an interesting little story thing. And like I haven't followed Dead Space 3's development at all, so this might be like old news to some of you. Uh-huh. But there was a, an audio log in there that was like, oh, we as the Unitologists need to kill Isaac Clark because he is going to ruin, you know, the, yeah. the markers right. and all that. So I'm not sure where that all came from, if they're all just pissed about the second one. So but the um, Unitarians hate you then. Game. Unitologists? Unitarians? Unitologists? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to piss off everyone with you. Oh, you see right. where I'm going here. Right. Yeah. I, you know... But they don't exist. They're not real. Oh, I don't tell me that about Mine. Unitarians. They're <laughs> yeah. so weird. <laughs> yes, now I got the Unitarians. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're loving people. No, they're horrible people. No, no, no. Um, especially the ones from Uganda. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> there it is. We got them all. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> that so, achievement should be called "You Are a Butthead." You are a butthead, Michael Mara. With the letter U. <laughs> yeah, with the letter U. Not, yeah. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Mutologists, uh, so they yes. want to kill Isaac. And I'm like, okay, this is a horror game. First right. off, I don't understand why there's cover-based shooting, because it's not like enemies can shoot at you. Oh, wait, but they can. The Necromorphs? Yeah. So, I, have you played one or two? I played one and two, yeah. Okay, so you know how there were, like, those little heads that, like, the, crawled around? They had the yeah, head? yeah. Yeah, apparently they can also infect dead bodies and just, like, knock them oh. the head and get in it. So make them, uh, and, like, make, make them, them flood. Shoot. Make them flood, pretty much. Kind of. Like, they, they don't move around. They're just, like, stationary turrets, kind of. That's weird. So it's like, oh, great. It's a dead now body holding a gun that has a no head. A dead body. With a I'm gun. Gonna, I'm gonna, don't <laughs> tell me about dead body. <laughs> I'm a cleaner. <laughs> um, so, overall... I am interested again, yeah. because honestly, I was not at all. I didn't really want to play Dead Space 2, because I feel, or 3, I mean, because I thought 2 was good, Yeah, but it really didn't have that atmosphere that 1 One is horrifying. 1 was very creepy. Yeah. And I know that was a big complaint about some of it, like, oh, this is a ship that people live on, and why does it feel like it is the worst thing ever? Well, and like so, they made the sprawl up a little more, you know, right? So like a little more decorative. I'm like, yeah. Okay, happy dead time. But like, this is a horror game, right? right? Yeah, like, like it should be creepy yeah. and gross, right? And, you know, right? So I'm not sure what they're gonna do. Like, I, I liked the atmosphere of just the desolate ice planet, right? Yeah, I don't know why he's there. Yeah, well, and I, who knows? But I'm sure that will be revealed I'm in sure a 20 be. minute cutscene in the beginning of the game, right? So, I, I will say that I'm interested. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if I'm going to buy it day one, mm-hmm. but I will play it at some point. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So the whole campaign is co-op, right? Co-opable? From my understanding, yeah. It's jump in, jump out. And there's no multiplayer anymore? There's, I don't think so. Okay. Because that was a fail. That was a and massive fail. the problem fail. was, like, it was a good idea. Oh, it's an awesome idea. But they just failed Wasn't at implementing it. Properly? Yeah. And again, the netcode. Like... Was oh, the next crap. one was really bad. Oh, such crap. It was unplayable. I, the thing that bothered me about that multiplayer, though, wasn't anything with the actual multiplayer. It was the fact that you needed an online pass. Yes. Because for me, Dead Space 2 was the first game that required an online yeah. pass. Yeah, that was annoying. Which was dumb. It remains annoying. And you should it stop doing toy. that, developers, because it's annoying. Yeah. 
we've got our finger on the pulse, people. Listen to us. Pulse rifle? Yes, that too. But also <laughs> the pulse of the industry. They should listen to the Moo Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, well, I add that to the list of five so, million games that I'm supposed to buy in the next five or six well, months. Well, play the demo when it comes out in a day or so. Okay, maybe I will. We'll see. I'd be curious to see, because I've never played any of the Dead Space games, um, if you can jump into the third one without having to play the previous two. No, I'm sure you can. A bunch of alien killing. Alright, cool. You're Not down with problem, that. But, like, I recommend that you play one. Too. You should play one for the story. It's awesome. Oh, okay. And freaky. That's all get out. You like yeah. dead babies? Sure. There's a lot of dead babies. There's a ton of scary <laughs> dead babies. I'm a cleaner. Well, then you'll like dead babies. Start seeing. <laughs> and two is dead infants. Oh, it's God, so It's why? so disturbing. Oh. It's just... Oh. Yeah. So... No, I'll stick with boogie bunnies. Cute little <laughs> Speaking of dead things... Oh, no. Halo 2, which oh. is already sadly, sadly mourned and deceased on console is now going to die a horrible, slow death on multiplayer PC soon. It's yeah. going to end the day after Valentine's Day. So many, oh. many PC nerds will forego their girlfriends on Valentine's Day to play one more <laughs> evening of, Halo of sweet, sweet Halo 2 goodness on PC. Lay her down by the fire one more time. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so sad because, uh, I mean... I I don't know why, but I find it sad, even though Halo 2 multiplayer was the one I never really played. That's what you should be sad about, that you didn't play it yeah. on console during the... A little bit. Oh, I mean, the I, glory I days. a little of the... Not, never online, but like oh. like the local co-op, oh, 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 rarely. Glory, glory days. And my total play time is probably like 20 minutes. Oh, no. But, um, yeah, it's still it's too sad. Halo 2 multiplayer, I can say, this. got me into being insane about shooter multiplayer games. Like, it got yes. us. It, 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 before Halo 2 multiplayer, as far as shooters went, I mean, I played Halo 1 and I loved it, but once Halo 2 hit and then had that awesome multiplayer suite attached to it, that's when shooters for me on console became something I buy for the multiplayer. Everything is, everything, like, is compared to how awesome Halo 2 was, and every and every next game I hope will have that same kind of like community that Halo 2 multiplayer did. Like it was so fun, oh. so fun. Yep. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's sad. just uh, it shows like what people do with Halo One and how they drag their Xboxes over to oh. land parties. Oh yeah. Now that it could be online, yeah. they didn't have to do that. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. I kind of miss the land parties. Oh, the social. Yeah, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Just throwing something at someone who's like. Yeah, two feet away. Feet yeah. me. <laughs> That's fun. Stop screen looking. <laughs> oh, screen oh, looking. Screen lookers. So, but it was it was definitely a great game, and uh, I'm surprised. Like, is anyone gonna pick up the the slack? Like, are there gonna be any other third party people? It didn't say. Well, X Xbox Connect is still that program that people you because you can still play Halo Two multiplayer over Xboxes now. But you have to use Xbox Connect on the PC to do it. So it's like a third-party thing. And so I'm assuming that they will do the same thing. They'll pick up the slack on the PC. So there'll always be some, like, crazy, dedicated 20 nerds a night, like, playing over Xbox Connect. But but no no more easy find uh, matchmaking through GameSpy or whatever the PC one uses. So that's sad. Oh, well. It's kind of like seeing the elves go. (laughs) I don't know why, Andrea, but it makes me sad. Seeing the elves go. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you see? You've seen the ex- extended versions of Lord of the Rings movies, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that scene. Yeah, I just thought yeah. it was funny that that's, <laughs> that's what you connected it to. <laughs> well, it's sad. <laughs> All right, so um, hey, we're transitioning nicely uh, this podcast. So we just talked about well, I just talked about Lord of the Rings for no good reason, and uh, now I'm going to go for no good reason into le- Lego games um, because I have Lego Lord of the Rings and it is super fun. Play it. It's super fun. Um, recently, uh, Telltale announced that yet again they're going to make another Lego franchise, and this time they're going to tackle the Lego Marvel Travelers. Travel, whoever. Telltale makes. Oh yeah, Traveler's Tales. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> they're, whatever. One of those game makers. Get it right. I know. Sorry. So they're going to make uh, Lego Marvel Universe, uh, and it is now the cover of the newest Game Informer magazine. If you have that, yeah. Um, what do you guys think about that, about Marvel going Lego, and what do you think about Lego games in general, and should there be a future for them, or is it lame sauce, Andrea? Oh, that's a lot of questions. Um, 
I've, I've never played any of the Lego games. Never? Not any of the Star Wars ones? Mm-mm. Oh my god. But whenever I see the, um, any trailers or that sort of thing, I just think they're so cute. Yes, the they are. The little Lego people. They are ridiculously um, cute. And I don't know, it's one of those things that I've, I've never played, but it just, it, Makes me happy, like oh look, look at the cute little Lego people. That makes me happy. It does. They're so cute. Um, and what, what, what's the point of the other question? so what do you think about Marvel going Lego? Oh, um, I'm not a huge comic book fan, so I'm kind of I don't really have an opinion. But did you see I, the Avengers movie? I did. I didn't like it. You did not. You didn't like it. I didn't like it. Oh. My no. God! You don't like the new Batman movies. No. You don't like the Avengers. No, no I, I just, I. Wow. I rented it from Netflix. Uh, it was around Thanksgiving. Who are you? And uh, um, just, can we just take was, your microphone? I, right I don't. Now? Yeah, I don't like, know what. I don't. I really don't know it what was, else to do. It was okay. I just, I didn't see what the big deal was. I. Um, I liked Iron Man. I liked the first Iron Man movie. You like the first Iron Man more than Avengers? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What? Yeah, I do. That's impossible for me to even fathom. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm not really a huge comic book fan, but so I, I couldn't really, I don't really have an opinion on that. But uh, they're more cute level people, so yay. So for that, you say yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Greg. I kind of roll my eyes every time I see a new Lego game. Yeah. Um. And I mean, the few that I've played, and by the few, I mean I played the the two Star Wars ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're they're not bad. No. But they're just very mediocre. Like it, for me, it's just a very like big collectathon, and right. then you can't access certain parts of the level unless you have certain characters. So you have to right. go through the whole game. Right. And you get all characters, well, and then come back, and then you get a hundred percent, and it's just like eh. And I mean, they're obviously selling really well because they, I feel like they make one every six months. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of them. Um, but, eh. I mean, the only one that I was kind of interested in was Lego Rock Band, and that was a That's thing. funny, yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I never picked it up. Yeah. I'd be, I mean, I like Lord of the Rings, so maybe I'll play it at some point. Yeah. But... I like to try Lego Lord of the Rings. Oh, and Harry Potter. And when it comes to... Yeah, there's another one. Like, really? <laughs> When it well, comes to the Avengers, I enjoyed the movie. A so lot. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I was as crazy as most people were, but I thought it was a very good movie. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like, oh, let's make it a Lego thing now. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. I got the Lego Lord of the Rings um, for Christmas from my wife, um, and we played a little bit of it, um, kind of just couch co-op. Um, I really, really love how they redo, like, famous scenes from the movies, and um, in particular, they do a really awesome job with cutscenes. They make them funny. Um, obviously, it's mostly geared towards families and kids, so I think that's kind of why the gameplay is so simplistic, why it's not really deep, because you could literally play it with anyone. Like, you'd, like, introduce your grandmother to that game in five <laughs> seconds, she'd know how to play it, you know? Uh-huh. Um, so, you know... You're obviously not going to get anything hardcore gamer out of it. Um, it's just kind of for fun and to waste time. Something that's non-competitive for like non-gamers to play with you. So in that regard, it's fun, but it's definitely something I wouldn't have picked up on my own if I didn't get it for a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, still, I mean, it's 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 more it's more of a quality title than most things you might see for kids, which is usually the crappiest games ever. You know, so like yeah, in that regard, true. in that regard, as a general kind of gamer, kind of in the in the community I'm happy that they exist but as a gamer of my own age like who wants to play a little bit more meaty games like it's not like it's something I would buy for myself you know mm-hmm. I'd, I'd more rather like buy Dark Souls 2 than like than Lego Lord of the Rings 2 you know what I mean because I want some kind of hardcore RPG I don't want like bash one button until yeah, the end yeah. <laughs> but you know it's fun I will say one thing too. If you haven't seen um, any any pictures or gameplay of Lego Lord of the Rings, you should just look at a screenshot just for the backgrounds. They're gorgeous. Like the the stages look awesome. They look really, really, really pretty. So uh, there we go. Cool. Um, Killer's Dead. So if you have been watching our channel, you have seen us play Killer Seven. And if you have not seen that game, particularly if you've not seen it before, you should check it out because it is weird as 
fill in the blank. <laughs> weird as anything that you possibly want to see. As Ubisoft? It's weird as Will Ubisoft. You? Got it. Ah, it. yes! Um, Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a messed up, it's a messed up piece of, um, piece of gaming. And, um, Suda, um, the developer, um, the creative mastermind guy who must be on acid, um, who created, uh, Killer7, is, uh, making a new game to come out this summer. And it's called Killer is Dead. And we just rewatched the trailer um, before we recorded this podcast, and we still don't mm-hmm. understand how anything could be that weird. Um, early predictions for Killer is Dead, Greg. Um, I'm going to predict that it... Oh, it looks a lot like Ninja Gaiden. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to say that it's going to be a bizarre story. Probably... Like, solid gameplay, but nothing exceptional. Because I feel like that's kind of his trend. Like, to have really bizarre, interesting characters right. and stories and locations. But the gameplay is never stellar. Right. Like, even with Killer7, like, it's it's alright, but right. it's, it's not anything to write home about. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Andrea, you think he's going to sell? Um, <laughs> it's, it's not a game I would run out and buy. I mean, it's, uh very different from what games I usually play. Right. Um, it doesn't say Call of Duty before it, after all. No. Right. <laughs> no, um, I, if I, if we weren't doing this Let's Play of Killer7, yeah. I guess I wouldn't know about it to right. pick up the game on my own. Right. You know? Um, but, uh, the, the main character, I guess his name is Mondo! Mondo! I, I love that in the trailer, um, yeah. to watch it, but, uh. It's it's weird. Uh, it it looks different from Killer Seven. I realize it's a HD it's a, finally. Yeah, it's uh, just the 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 graphics. It's um, I don't know how quite how to describe it. It's very different from anything I've seen. Yeah, kind of cel shaded. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. It's not really my cup of tea, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I will okay. say I think they did a great job um, of releasing it in the summer. Because yeah, nothing that, ever you releases. You want to talk about a pet peeve of mine? Like, people don't release games ever in the summer. No, I they know. do not. Like, mm-hmm. everything, nothing comes out until September. Yep. At least. Yep. And it's just like, I don't understand why publishers think we don't have money in the summer. Right. Because it's like, I actually sometimes usually have free time in the summer. To right. To play through games. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, you have to wait until we release 17 of them at Christmas. Right. Yep. And then Mike buys all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then has no money for yeah. that whole rest of the year. Yeah. That's uh, it. Uh, yeah, I, I think if I, I think I'm along the same lines as you, Greg. I think if the if they can get the control down and they have that weird story and that cool art style, I will be totally in. But I'm reserving judgment, it's especially after doing our let's play and watching you struggle on the sticks for <laughs> for Killer Seven. Like I really don't want to play a game that's an action game that I can't get into the action because I can't control it. So. We'll see what happens, folks. Uh, all right, I think we're going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, thanks so much for listening. As always, leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing, check out our other and gameplay videos, and... Please, if you have the time, uh, review our stuff on iTunes. Oh, yeah. Review our podcast. We need writings. That would really, really help us out. Um, we're hoping maybe to get picked up and be new and noteworthy yeah. in the Ooh. podcast section. So if we get enough good ratings, that will happen. All right, so thank you so much for your support. We are over 5,000 views uh, on our YouTube channel, and I know that's not a lot for most people, but for us, we are tickled pink, especially Andrea. Yep. So we'll see you next time, folks, (laughs) here on the Monday MooCast. Moo! Please leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing, check out our other gameplay videos, and... Please, if you have the time, uh, review our stuff on iTunes. Oh, yeah. Review our podcast. We need writings. That would really, really help us out. New and noteworthy. Yeah. The podcast Ooh. section. So if we get enough good ratings, that will happen. All right. So thank you so much for your support. We are over 5,000 views uh, on our YouTube channel. And I know Ooh. that's not a lot for most people, but for us, we are tickled pink, especially Andrea. Yep. So we'll see you next time, folks, <laughs> here on the Monday Moocast. Moo! Ooh.